Welcome to our channel. Check out our new video where we discuss the latest 50 questions and answers from the CITB book, Health, Safety and Environment Test for Operatives and Specialists. We'll cover all the important questions and give you detailed answers from this important booklet. To make it easy to follow along, you'll find the link to the next video in the top right corner. Let's learn together. A quick heads up. This challenge takes about 45 minutes, and passing at least 45 out of 50 questions is the goal. Before we start, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to show your support. We appreciate it. Question 1. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Do not use it as the substance is poisonous. B. Find out what protection you need as the substance is corrosive and can damage your skin upon contact. C. Wash your hands after you have used the substance. D. Find out what hand cleaner you will need as the substance will not wash off easily. The correct answer is B. Find out what protection you need as the substance is corrosive and can damage your skin upon contact. Question 2. Apart from work for domestic clients, under the current construction, design and management. Regulations, in which of the following situations must the health and safety executive, HSE, be notified of a project? A. Where the work will last more than 30 days or more than 500 person days. B. Where the building and construction work will last more than 300 person days. C. When the work will take place outside normal hours. D. Where there is more than one building to be erected. The correct answer is A. Where the work will last more than 30 days or more than 500 person days. Question 3. What does this sign mean? A. Load bearing roof. Okay to stand on surface but not any roof lights. B. Fragile roof. Take care when walking on roof surface. C. Fragile roof. Do not stand directly on roof but use full protection measures. D. Load bearing roof. Surface can be slippery when wet. The correct answer is C. Fragile roof. Do not stand directly on roof but use full protection measures. Question 4. If you find bats on site, which of the following statements is true? A. Bats are not a protected species so you can disturb or destroy their shelters or resting places. B. You can move the bats as long as you do it at night when they are out foraging. C. You can disturb or destroy shelters or resting places of bats if they get in the way of building work. D. Bats are a protected species so you cannot disturb or destroy their shelters or resting places. The correct answer is D. Bats are a protected species so you cannot disturb or destroy their shelters or resting places. Question 5. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Dispose of the substance or contents by burning. B. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could explode. C. Find out how to use the substance safely as it is flammable, could catch fire easily. D. Warm up the contents first, with heat or a naked flame. The correct answer is C. Find out how to use the substance safely as it is flammable, could catch fire easily. Question 6. Which of the following should you do in the interest of sustainability on site? A. Run plant and equipment when they are not needed. B. Bury waste materials in the ground. C. Comply with site instructions on handling waste materials. D. Pour waste liquids down a drain outside the site. The correct answer is C. Comply with site instructions on handling waste materials. Question 7. These signs tell you that a substance can be A. Harmful. B. Toxic. C. Corrosive. D. Harmful to the environment. The correct answer is D. Harmful to the environment. Question 8. What is the purpose of the health and safety file on a construction project? A. To assist people who have to carry out work on the structure in the future. B. To assist in the preparation of final accounts for the structure. C. To record the health and safety standards of the structure. D. To record the accident details. The correct answer is A. To assist people who have to carry out work on the structure in the future. Question 9. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Find out what protection you need as the substance is harmful and can damage your health. B. Use sparingly as substance is expensive. C. Wear gloves as the substance can burn your skin. D. Do not use it as the substance is poisonous. The correct answer is A. Find out what protection you need as the substance is harmful and can damage your health. Question 10. Which type of accident kills most construction workers? A. Falling from height. B. Contact with electricity. C. Being run over by site transport. D. Being hit by a falling object. The correct answer is A. Falling from height. Question 11. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Make sure it is stored out of the reach of children. B. 
Use the substance very carefully and make sure you don't spill or splash it on yourself. C. Do not use it as the substance is poisonous. D. Find out what protection you need as the substance is toxic and in low quantities could seriously damage your health or kill you. The correct answer is D. Find out what protection you need as the substance is toxic and in low quantities could seriously damage your health or kill you. Question 12. Untidy leads and extension cables are responsible for many trips and lost work time injuries. What two things should you do to help? A. Run cables and leads above head height and over the top of doorways and walkways rather than across the floor. B. Tie any excess cables and leads up into the smallest coil possible. C. Keep cables and leads close to the wall and not in the middle of the floor or walkway. D. Make sure your cables go where you want them to and not worry about others. E. Unplug the nearest safety lighting and use these sockets instead. The correct answers are A. Run cables and leads above head height and over the top of doorways and walkways rather than across the floor. C. Keep cables and leads close to the wall and not in the middle of the floor or walkway. Question 13. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Find out how to handle the substance as it is fragile. B. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could explode. C. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could catch fire easily. D. Do not use the substance as it could kill you. The correct answer is B. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could explode. Question 14. What danger is created by excessive oxygen in a confined space? A. Increase in breathing rate of workers. B. Increased flammability of combustible materials. C. Increased working time inside work area. D. False sense of security. The correct answer is B. Increased flammability of combustible materials. Question 15. What does this sign mean? A. No running allowed. B. There is no escape route. C. This is a fire door. D. Fire escape route. The correct answer is B. There is no escape route. Question 16. Before planning for anyone to enter a confined space, following the principles of prevention, what should be the first consideration of the manager or supervisor? A. Has the atmosphere in the confined space been tested? B. Has a safe means of access and egress been established? C. Is there an alternative method of doing the work? D. Have all who intend to enter the confined space been properly trained? The correct answer is C. Is there an alternative method of doing the work? Question 17. What does this warning sign mean? A. Substance can explode. B. Substance will cause heartburn if swallowed. C. Substance can glow in the dark. D. Substance can cause long-term serious health problems. The correct answer is D. Substance can cause long-term serious health problems. Question 18. Which two of the following factors must be considered when providing first aid facilities on site? A. The cost of first aid equipment. B. The hazards, risks and nature of the work carried out. C. The number of people expected to be on site at any one time. D. The difficulty in finding time to purchase the necessary equipment. E. The space in the site office to store the necessary equipment. The correct answers are B. The hazards, risks and nature of the work carried out. C. The number of people expected to be on site at any one time. Question 19. Yellow and black signs are A. Mandatory signs, meaning you must do something. B. Prohibition signs, meaning you must not do something. C. Warning signs, alerting you to hazards or danger. D. Safe condition signs, giving you information. The correct answer is C. C. Warning signs, alerting you to hazards or danger. Question 20. How should cylinders containing liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, be stored on site? A. In a locked cellar with clear warning signs. B. In a locked, external compound at least 3 meters from any oxygen cylinders. C. Within a secure storage container. D. Covered by tarpaulin to shield the compressed cylinder from sunlight. The correct answer is B. In a locked, external compound at least 3 meters from any oxygen cylinders. Question 21. Blue and white signs are A. Mandatory signs, meaning you must do something. B. Prohibition signs, meaning you must not do something. C. Warning signs, alerting you to hazards or danger. D. Safe condition signs, giving you information. The correct answer is A. Mandatory signs, meaning you must do something. Question 22. An employer has to prepare a written health and safety policy if A. They employ five people or more. B. They employ three people or more. C. They employ a safety officer. D. The work is going to last more than 30 days. The correct answer is A. They employ five people or more. Question 23. Green and white signs are A. 
Mandatory signs, meaning you must do something. B. Prohibition signs, meaning you must not do something. C. Warning signs, alerting you to hazards or danger. D. Safe condition signs, giving you information. The correct answer is D. Safe condition signs, giving you information. Question 24. If a prohibition notice is issued by an inspector of the health and safety executive, HSE, or local authority, a work can continue, provided that a risk assessment is carried out. B. The work that is subject to the notice must cease. C. The work can continue if extra safety precautions are taken. D. The work in hand can be completed, but no new work started. The correct answer is B. The work that is subject to the notice must cease. Question 25. Round red and white signs with a diagonal line are A. Mandatory signs, meaning you must do something. B. Prohibition signs, meaning you must not do something. C. Warning signs, alerting you to hazards or danger. D. Safe condition signs, giving you information. The correct answer is B. Prohibition signs, meaning you must not do something. Question 26. In deciding what control measures to take, following a risk assessment that has revealed a risk, what measure should you always consider first? A. Make sure personal protective equipment, PPE, is available. B. Adapt the work to the individual. C. Give priority to measures that protect the whole workforce. D. Avoid the risk altogether if possible. The correct answer is D. Avoid the risk altogether if possible. Question 27. What does this sign mean? A. Assemble here in the event of a fire. B. Fire extinguishes and firefighting equipment kept here. C. Parking reserved for emergency service vehicles. D. Do not store flammable materials here. The correct answer is B. Fire extinguishes and firefighting equipment kept here. Question 28. From a safety point of view, which of the following should be considered first when deciding on the number and location of access and egress points to a site? A. Off-road parking for cars and vans. B. Access for the emergency services. C. Access for heavy vehicles. D. Site security. The correct answer is B. Access for the emergency services. Question 29. What does this sign mean? A. You must carry safety gloves at all times. B. Dispose of used safety gloves here. C. Safety gloves do not need to be worn. D. Safety gloves must be worn. The correct answer is D. Safety gloves must be worn. Question 30. What is the purpose of using a permit to work system? A. To ensure that the job is being carried out properly. B. To ensure that the job is carried out by the easiest method. C. To enable tools and equipment to be properly checked before work starts. D. To establish a safe system of work. The correct answer is D. D. To establish a safe system of work. Question 31. What does this sign mean? A. Toilets and shower facilities. B. Drying area for wet weather clothes. C. Emergency first aid shower. D. Fire sprinklers above. The correct answer is C. Emergency first aid shower. Question 32. Employers must prevent exposure of their workers to substances hazardous to health, where this is reasonably practicable. If it is not reasonably practicable, which of the following should be considered first? A. What instruction, training and supervision to provide? B. What health surveillance arrangements will be needed? C. How to minimize risk and control exposure? D. How to monitor the exposure of workers in the workplace? The correct answer is C. How to minimize risk and control exposure? Question 33. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Do not use it as the substance is poisonous. B. Find out what protection you need as the substance is corrosive and can damage your skin upon contact. C. Wash your hands after you have used the substance. D. Find out what hand cleaner you will need as the substance will not wash off easily. The correct answer is B. Find out what protection you need as the substance is corrosive and can damage your skin upon contact. Question 34. What is the best way for a supervisor or manager to make sure that the operatives doing a job have fully understood a method statement? A. Put the method statement in a labeled spring binder in the office. B. Explain the method statement to those doing the job and test their understanding. C. Make sure that those doing the job have read the method statement. D. Display the method statement on a notice board in the office. The correct answer is B. Explain the method statement to those doing the job and test their understanding. Question 35. What does this sign mean? A. Fire alarm call point. B. Hot surface. Do not touch. C. Wear flame-proof hand protection. D. Emergency light switch. The correct answer is A. Fire alarm call point. Question 36. 
What should be included in a safety method statement for working at height? Give three answers. A. The cost of the job and time it will take. B. The sequence of operations and the equipment to be used. C. How much insurance cover will be required. D. How falls are to be prevented. E. Who will supervise the job on site. The correct answers are. B. The sequence of operations and the equipment to be used. D. How falls are to be prevented. E. Who will supervise the job on site. Question 37. What does this sign mean? A. Radioactive area. B. Warning. Explosive substance. C. Flashing lights ahead. D. Warning. Laser beams. The correct answer is D. D. Warning. Laser beams. Question 38. The Beaufort scale is important when working at height externally because it measures the A. Ratio of sloping ground to height. B. Load-bearing capacity of a flat roof. C. Wind speed. D. Load-bearing capacity of a scaffold. The correct answer is C. Wind speed. Question 39. If you see either of these labels on a substance what should you do? A. Find out how to handle the substance as it is fragile. B. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could explode. C. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could catch fire easily. D. Do not use the substance as it could kill you. The correct answer is. B. Find out how to use the substance safely as it could explode. Question 40. If you see frost around the valve on a liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, cylinder, it means. A. The cylinder is nearly empty. B. The cylinder is full. C. The valve is leaking. D. You must lay the cylinder on its side. The correct answer is. C. The valve is leaking. Question 41. What does this sign mean? A. Press here to sound the fire alarm. B. Fire hose reel located here. C. Turn key to open fire door. D. Do not use if there is a fire. The correct answer is. B. Fire hose reel located here. Question 42. How can you help prevent a fire hazard? A. Store solvents and paints in the drying room. B. Leave your clothes over a heater all night. C. Keep your work area tidy and place waste in the bins provided. D. Store materials and equipment along the exit routes. The correct answer is. C. Keep your work area tidy and place waste in the bins provided. Question 43. What does this sign mean? A. Wear hearing protection if you want to. B. You must wear hearing protection. C. No personal stereos or MP3 players. D. Caution. Noisy machinery. The correct answer is. B. You must wear hearing protection. Question 44. Look at these jobs. Which two are likely to need a hot work permit? A. Cutting steel with an angle grinder. B. Soldering pipe work in a central heating system. C. Refueling a diesel dump truck. D. Replacing an empty liquefied petroleum gas cylinder with a full one. E. Using the heaters in the drying room. The correct answers are. A. Cutting steel with an angle grinder. B. Soldering pipe work in a central heating system. Question 45. A carbon dioxide, CO2, extinguisher, identified by a black band, should not be used on what type of fire? A. Wood, paper, textile and solid material fires. B. Flammable liquids, fuel, oil, varnish, paints, etc. C. Electrical fires. D. Metal and molten metal. The correct answer is. D. Metal and molten metal. Question 46. What does a hot work permit not tell you? A. When you can start and when you must stop the hot work. B. How you must prevent sparks or heat traveling. C. Where the local fire station is located. D. What fire extinguisher or fire watch you need? The correct answer is. C. Where the local fire station is located. Question 47. What does this sign mean? A. Risk of electrocution. B. Risk of static shock. C. Live electrical appliance. D. Risk of lightning. The correct answer is. A. Risk of electrocution. Question 48. How would you expect a well-organized site to keep pedestrians away from traffic routes? A. The site manager will direct all pedestrians away from traffic routes. B. The traffic routes will be shown on the health and safety law poster. C. There will be barriers between traffic and pedestrian routes. D. There is no need to keep traffic and pedestrians apart. The correct answer is. C. There will be barriers between traffic and pedestrian routes. Question 49. A water fire extinguisher, identified by a red band, should only be used on what type of fire? A. Wood, paper, textile and solid material fires. B. Flammable liquids, fuel, oil. Varnish, paints, etc. C. Electrical fires. D. Metal and molten metal. 
The correct answer is A. Wood, paper, textile and solid material fires. Question 50. What are the two conditions for being able to operate plant on site? A. You must be trained and competent. B. You must be authorized. C. You must be over 21 years old. D. You must hold a full driving license. E. You must hold a UK passport. The correct answers are A. You must be trained and competent. B. You must be authorized. Great work! You've completed this session successfully. Keep up the good work by moving on to the next video in this series. You'll find the link in the top right corner of this video.